good morning. morning. Welcome, everyone. We want to welcome to those of you online today, and we want to wish you a happy, belated Merry Christmas. We're standing up in Christmas mode, and we're so glad that you're with us this morning, and that many of you survived the the hard, difficult weather of the week, and and so it's so good to see everybody online and in person today. We just want to wish you a happy and Merry Christmas, but you know, this is also the end, the last service of the year as we enter into a new season in 2021, and you know, I think many of us are excited for 2020 to end, (laughs) everything that it came, but you know, one of the things that we could look back on is that we could see the thankfulness of God. We could see the blessing of God. We could see miracles. We could, you know, if many of us just take a moment and just look back at this year, we could see the hand of God in a lot of things. And, and where we see God moved into la- this last year, even though it was a year of difficulty, we still have testimonies and we still have things to be thankful for, for what God did. And I want to encourage you as you close out this year, just Look back and just ask the Lord to highlight those things and let the Lord remind you of the miracles and the testimonies and the things that he really did for you in this year where you could be thankful to the Lord. You know, we have a few things coming up we want to make you aware of today as we get ready to launch in today's message. Um, first thing is, is we this last week we saw some powerful testimonies. You know, again, I could tell you this, as difficult as this season's been, the phone, the phone has been really busy and people call and people that are in need, you know, people need prayer for healing and we're seeing God heal. People need words of encouragement. People are processing, you know, we've, have gotten phone calls of people wanting prayer for transitions and jobs and, you know, they're praying about something. So we're praying with people as they transition from one season to the next season. We're seeing God move in that way. And we're just so, I just want you to know, this has been a busy season of God ministering to people through this church. And Doors are opening in our community, and I, something happened this last week that I could just say this as a title, is that a stronghold in our community, I believe, was removed this last week by the hand of God. And I can't wait to tell you more about that, but just want you to know as we go in, uh, the first thing I want to remind you of with that note is realizing at the first week of January, we want to encourage you for a week of prayer and fasting. As we go into this new year, we believe what we do in the beginning sets the tone for the next year. And one of the things we can do is, is prayer and fasting. Taking a week to set a time, you know, as the, like Isaiah talks about, Isaiah 58 says, is this not the fast I've chosen? So we want to encourage you, how, ask the Lord how he wants you to fast and pray as you enter in the new year. And then there will be more details coming. We like to keep the church open during that week for prayer and fasting. If you want to come during the morning, the day, or the evening, we'll make sure that the church is open so you can fast and pray and where we could have some corporate times of prayer and fasting. And just want you to know that as I've done this discipline over the years, you know, if you looked at, none of us knew what 2020 would look like. But you know what? As we pray and fast, God prepares us for the year ahead. And just know that when we pray and fast this first week, you don't know what you're setting yourself up for for this for the year. You don't know what kind of blessings God wants to release to you during this year. So prayer and fasting is a way where we could connect with the Lord at the start of the year. Another thing we want to make you aware of is next Sunday, January 3rd, will be our first service of the year. I invited a good friend to come. As a lot of you may know him, a good friend, my friend Arik Tofak. He used to do ministry at St. Cloud State. Him and his wife had planted a church in, in North Carolina. He's, his ministry is called Royal Heirs. And he is a gift. To, you know, He's just been a gifted friend to my life. But, but what I love about Arik is, is some of you have been ministered by him with his The prophetic words and the words of encouragement, pinpoint accuracy are incredible. And I just felt led of the Lord to invite him to come as we start the new year. Because with prayer and fasting, many of us are asking God, what's our word for the year? 
you know, we need to be asking God, what do you, what's your word for the year for me? And, and a lot of times God will confirm that through prophetic ministry. And so he's going to come and minister to us morning and we're going to have an evening service as well next Sunday, January 3rd. And also coming up in the middle of January, I want to make you aware of a, of, a, of a day where we have a school called Kingdom Culture School of Ministry. It's going to be one day. There will be information on our Facebook page about that. But we just want to make you aware that there will be a day. If you want to learn how to pray for the sick, and if you want to learn how to prophesy, you want to learn to grow deeper in understanding... Uh, the spiritual gifts and and how God wants to use you or maybe you're just you're just hungry to know more of the Lord and you want to be a vessel that God could work through and use I want to encourage you to come to this Saturday it'll be a one-day school my good friend Kristen De Arpa will will be sharing that day as well so we just want to make that available to you and as we also at the end of the year we just want to encourage you as well as that you know as you tithe and, and as you give we want to encourage you Maybe the Lord's put on your heart to give an end of the year gift, or it may be a, a first fruits offering to start the new year. We want to, we're just so thankful for your generosity in this season, how the Lord has blessed this church. And, and as we just give today, we just, I just want to pray over this and want to encourage you today just to give as the Lord leads. And, and, and again, there's four different ways that you could do that this morning, and you could see the slide. And if you're watching in person today, you could give in the offering boxes at the beginning, at the entry points of our sanctuary. So thank you for your generosity in this season. So Heavenly Father, we want to thank you as we open up this service today. Father, we want to thank you for the miracles of this, of, of this last week and this last year. Lord, as we look back at this year, we're thankful for, one, for building rebuilding this building with siding and roof that you provided we want to thank you for the lives that have been touched even though it's been a different year and ministry has has, has, has proven to be different you have given us the opportunity to reach more people you've we planted a church called online ministry that we're reaching more people online than we could in, in other ways and Lord, we're thankful that in this season, yeah, it's been crazy and chaotic, but at the same time, the outreach is growing and lives are being touched. Bodies are being healed. People are coming to Christ. People are being encouraged. You're giving us favor within the city walls. And Lord, at, and Lord last week, seeing a major stronghold get removed out of our city, which I believe will open up the heavens over this church and see in a powerful way. You did that, Lord, with your mighty hand and outstretched arm. And Lord, eight years of fasting and praying, it was great to see a stronghold just come tumbling down before my eyes. And Lord, we want to thank you that, again, you're moving. Your hand is moving. You're doing incredible things during difficult times. And Lord, thank you, God, for the gifts. Thank you for these offerings that we're about to give to you today. Lord, we lift these offerings up and we're thankful. We're thankful that you take the little and you multiply it to meet the need with more than enough left over. Father, we just thank you, God, as we go into this new year. We know we have missionaries to support. We have outreach ideas and dreams to do. And, Lord, we believe that as we launch out into those things by faith, you're going to release the provision we need to, to do the go of the gospel in this community and in this state, region, and world. We are so thankful, Lord, for what you're doing today. And so thankful for the people of this amazing church. So, Father, we just pray that you bless this day as we give. Bless this morning as we get ready to launch into your word and as we get ready to close out this new year. I ask that you would speak a fresh word to our hearts today. I pray that as we fast and pray, reveal the word of the Lord to our lives, to our families today, to individuals. God, we pray that you make the scripture come alive. And we just pray that as we close out this year and be thankful for what you've done. Help us to look ahead to the new year that you want to bring us. And Lord, help us to expect and anticipate your word to be spoken to each of us so that we have an anchor going forward in this next season. 
And as we close, we lift up our nation. Father, we're a nation in division and turmoil. We pray that you minister through our president. We pray that you minister through all the chaos and the confusion that's surrounding our election. We pray, God, that you minister and move powerfully. We pray that everything that needs to be exposed gets exposed. We pray that everything that's true and real gets exposed and brought to the table so that those that are in charge can make a decision based on wisdom and truth and, and actual facts rather Rather than hearsay or anything else lord we know the enemy is the author of confusion and chaos but lord you bring peace and unity father we just declare that you bring a peace and a unity to our nation during this time and again lord we pray that you're the we look to you because your word says you're the one who sets kings in authority and you're the one who sets rulers in its place father no matter what man plots or whether man schemes or devises no matter what plan man desires lord ultimately you're the god who puts people in authority today we just look to you in this season father we look to you to put the right leader in our nation's place father we pray that your mighty hand and outstretched arm would move powerfully and that you god would move behind the scenes to minister and move through people we pray for awakening we pray for revival restoration and reformation to take place in our land Father, we pray that COVID-19 and, and, and this, this spirit of infirmity that it's bringing would subside and cease in Jesus' name. We pray that those that, that are struggling would be healed and that the recovery time would be faster than what doctors are prescribing. We pray a hedge of protection over our church. We pray a hedge of protection over our body. We plead the blood of Jesus over the people of our church in this season, and we ask that you protect us. Lord, your word says in Psalms 91, that no pestilence or plague will befall our tent. So, Father, we pray that you protect us in this season with your blood. We ask that you protect us from sickness and diseases to take root in our lives, in our homes, and in our families. We ask, God, that we would walk with an angelic protection and that we would walk under the shadow of your wings and that we would continually take refuge in you and just walk by faith and not by sight as we enter in to this next year and to this next season. So, Father, we thank you for this day today. In Jesus' name, amen. Check out this video as we get ready to start. Hey, Ed, come check out my North Star Christmas tree topper at Levitate's. Is this a gummy bear? Yeah, we lost baby Jesus. Hey, check out these LED lights. I have them synced up to a 76-hour all-Christmas music playlist. There's my little Christmas DJ. <laughs> Ow! So, are you waiting till Christmas is over so you can go buy a new nativity set when they're on sale? Huh? No! No! Oh, no! We lost baby Jesus like 11 years ago. Is, is baby Jesus always a gummy bear? Oh, uh, no, oh, we trade it out every year. Yeah, like uh, last year it was a uh, tiny troll doll. <laughs> and the year before that we used a uh, dog treat. They were the perfect size, but <laughs> Dalton kept taking them and eating them. You, you mean your dog kept stealing them? No, my son Dalton, he loves those dog treats. <laughs> Especially the peanut butter ones. There was one year that we used a, uh, a doll head. That was creepy. We, we made a modeling clay, baby Jesus. So the dog took that one too. Um, one year we got desperate and used an ice cube. That was a mess and a mess. Yeah, just seems like everything we try to replace baby Jesus with never lasts. Say that again. Everything we try to replace baby Jesus with never seems to last. And? And what? Say it again, slowly. Why? Just do it, dulcimo, slowly, do it. I don't understand what's happening. Just do it. This is getting weird. Say it! Fine! But when I'm done saying this, you're gonna march in here and you're gonna watch my star levitate. Fine, 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 do it. Fine. Everything we try to replace baby Jesus with never seems to, oh, yep, there it is. Okay, <laughs> Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs> All right, if you got your Bibles today, let's go to Matthew chapter 2, please. 
We're going to spend time in Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 through 12 today. What I find about studying the birth of Jesus is, is that every year, as I look at this story, as I look at Matthew's account and Luke's account, I'm amazed at how many, how many different themes or thoughts that hit me. It's amazing that when you go to Scripture and you reread the Scripture or reread a passage, it's amazing how God could speak to you differently every time you read it. And today, I'm amazed at today, I, in all my years of preaching ministry, I, this message is the first time I ever saw this, but I feel like it's what the Lord wants to say to us as we close out the new year. We've been in a series during the Christmas season called Hope in the Darkness. And we believe that Jesus Christ is our hope in the darkness. And we also believe that in dark times, we can find hope. You know, that's, that's our blessed hope. There, no matter how many seasons we go through where it seems dark or, or it seems like we're being tested or challenged, the good news of the gospel is there's always hope. And as believers, we have a blessed hope. And our blessed hope is the assurance that we know that Jesus Christ is coming again and he's coming again soon. And when we go through hard times, we have a blessed hope that we could look to Jesus in difficult and trying times. And as we have all celebrated this past week, we've celebrated Christmas. But, you know, and now today it's the 27th. And, and many of you, you know, it's like you, you have the anticipation of Christmas. You have Christmas. Now we're kind of on the, oh, we're on the downside trend where we feel tired, we feel exhausted, or, or that adrenaline rush of, of getting to family and being with family, celebrating, opening up packages, and, and then after that happens, it feels like, man, it kind of feels like a letdown, doesn't it? But you know, in Matthew chapter 2, I felt like the Lord saying, today we, we need to understand what it means to find Jesus. And in that video that we just showed, it kind of ties into this message today. As we look at Matthew chapter 2, verse 1, it says, after Jesus was born. See, we're in the after part right now. You see, I want to let you know this, is that the Magi, your nativity scene is a little off base. Let me explain why. It's because Mary and Joseph, there was no room for the end. They go to the end. Mary gives birth to Jesus. God sends the shepherds there. They leave and they go. But guess what? It wasn't until between Jesus was born until he's two years old that the Magi showed up. The Magi did not show up the same night the shepherds did. The Magi showed up maybe a year or two later. Because it says in the context here that the, that the Magi showed up to the home of Jesus where Jesus was being was, he was already born and so I just want that you know that today that after Jesus birth see Jesus is born and he's growing up in Nazareth with his parents and here we find that we find that salvation and peace during dark times and seasons it says after Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the time of King Herod, the Magi from the east came to Jerusalem. And it's interesting that after Jesus was born, we could still find salvation. See, Jesus means to the one who saves. Bethlehem means house of bread. Jerusalem means peace. That even after the celebration, we could find salvation and peace. That we could during dark times and dark seasons. It says here at the time of King Herod. The time of King Herod was not a good thing. King Herod was a madman as a king. If you, if you read the historical account about King Herod, he was brilliant at building great, beautiful buildings. You know, the way that he built Jerusalem was incredible. The buildings that he built were, were beyond anything of his day. But he also was a madman. He killed his own wives. He killed his own kids. He was just... he. He was very messed up as an individual. And when King Herod was ruling at that time, it was very oppressive. It was hard. The people were under an oppressive king and, and the fear that he instilled in the people. It was a very hard time to live in those days. 
But as we see in this first verse, after Jesus was born, see, it gives us hope that there's salvation and peace even during dark times and dark seasons. And we also find Jesus after Christmas too. See, it's never too late to find Jesus. See, what we forget is the Magi showed up after Jesus was born. The star led them to, to Jesus' home after he was born. See, the Magi were late to the celebration, but they weren't too late to find Jesus. And I tell you what, it gives us hope for everyone. If you have family members, if you have friends or coworkers that don't know Jesus, the good news of the gospel is it's never too late to find Jesus. We see that in uh, the thief on the cross. It gives us a hope for everyone is that it's never too late to find Jesus. You're never too young to find Jesus. You're never too old to find Jesus. You can find Jesus in this season and you can find Jesus in dark times you can find him in the good times you can find him in any season of your life the good news is is that even though the magi were late to the celebration they weren't too late to find Jesus even though the star came a little later it didn't come on the actual birth the magi followed that star to the home of Jesus and the magi followed God to a full obedience even though they were late to the birth, they weren't late to find Jesus. It's never too late to find Jesus because God's timing is always perfect. God's timing is always perfect. The Magi are also a picture of the Gentiles, by the way, which means it's anyone, anyone can find Jesus. Finding Jesus isn't just for a select group of people. See, the Magi were Gentiles. They, they came out of the area of Babylon, and they went on this 500-mile journey from, from their home to find Jesus. So it shows us that God is reaching everybody. The, the gospel isn't just for a select group of people. The gospel, the good news of the gospel, is for every man, woman, or child. Everyone can find Jesus and it's never too late to find Jesus we need to know that as we're wrapping up Christmas as we're wrapping up 2020 I believe the Lord is trying to speak to us today that that it's still it's still time to find Jesus if you haven't found Jesus yet you can still find him and if, even though you're a believer in Christ we we still need to keep finding Jesus we need to find him in hard seasons we need to find him in difficult seasons we need to keep finding Jesus because he's always moving he's always leading he's always guiding he's always speaking and, and we need to keep an open heart so we keep finding Jesus even after we've accepted him into our heart we still must keep an open heart to find Jesus in our everyday life. We need to learn to find Jesus in other people by sharing the good news with them, praying with them, encouraging them that, that we need to keep an open heart in this season. And as we look at Matthew 2, 1 through 12, I see 12 ways that we can find Jesus. Now, don't get worried. It's because it's 12 points. It doesn't mean it's going to be long. But I just want you to show you today that there's 12 Ways we could find Jesus. Guess what? It make, gives us all hope. And I find it interesting that there's 12 because there's 12 disciples and Jesus reached each one of the disciples differently, which shows us that God reaches us differently. And so in this passage, we see 12 ways that we could find Jesus. Why? Because God desires all of us to find Jesus. God wants your family members to find Jesus, your co-workers to find Jesus. He wants the city of Mora to find Jesus. And if you're watching online, he wants you to find Jesus in your neighborhood, in your workplace and city where you live today. So this is how we find him in verse 1. Finding Jesus takes time. You see, it's a 500-mile journey. So finding Jesus takes time. You know, we can find Jesus instantly, but for many people, they're on a journey. And it takes time to find Jesus, and we need, to, we need to give people grace. And so understanding that it takes time for people to find Jesus. In verse 1, we also see that it took a step of faith, because the Magi, in order for them to find Jesus, what do they have to do? They had to take a step of faith. They, they had to leave the place where they were living to go to where Jesus was. That's faith. That's a step of journey. So we find Jesus by taking a step of faith. And I find it interesting that all these ways that we find Jesus, I'm sure the Lord's going to speak to you Bible stories, scriptures, passages that illustrate each of these points. In verses 2 through 5, 
we find Jesus by asking questions. Look at it. Look at it. And it says here in verse 2, it says, The Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and they asked. There's the question. Where is the one who was born king of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all of Jerusalem with him. When he had the, called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked the question, where the Messiah was to be born? And they answered him, in Bethlehem in Judea, they replied. So we see we find Jesus by asking questions. We find and then one of the most important questions that the Magi asked, and even King Herod himself, is where is the one born king of the Jews? We, people come to Jesus by asking questions. People ask questions, and the Magi were just wondering. They, they needed confirmation. They're, they're following in the star, but they ask a valid question. Where is the one born king of the Jews? In verses 5 and 6, we also find Jesus through belief in God's word. It says here in verse 5, And the chief priest said in Bethlehem, Judea, they replied, For this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. So we see that people, you can find Jesus through the belief of God's word. That God raised up prophets to speak of the word of the Lord. And, and through believing the word of the Lord, you can find Jesus. I mean, I love the Gideons. You know, I used to go to the Gideon banquets and I would hear stories of, of, of the Gideon men. The word of God. But And at his lowest point, he was crying out to God for a sign. And he goes up to a garbage can and he finds a Bible in a garbage can, pulls the Bible out of the garbage can, and he gets saved. <laughs> the word of God reaches people. And you can find Jesus through God's word. And you know what? If you're a believer in Jesus Christ, don't lose your heart for God's word. Because even though you know, even though you've come to know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, we keep discovering and finding who Jesus is through reading the word, through understanding the word, growing in the word. That, that's how we grow in our relationship with the Lord. So we keep finding Jesus as we study scripture, as we look into scripture, read scripture. It's amazing. We still find Jesus through the belief of God's word. Verses seven and eight. You know, here's an interesting one. Because we see that the individual here is not a perfect person by no means. But yet, remember this, we find Jesus through people. And a lot of times we can find Jesus through the most unlikely people. There's, you know what, for me, I, I got saved because a Navy chaplain decided to share the gospel with me. I mean, probably the most unlikely person ever, but God used him and worked through this Navy chaplain at my lowest point in life. And many of you could probably think of the, the most unlikely people that have come into your life to help you find Jesus. And if you're a believer, maybe chaplain at my lowest point in life. And many of you could probably think of the, the most unlikely people that have come into your life to help you find Jesus. And if you're a believer, maybe you're going through a tough time, you're going through a sickness, you're going through an area, guess what? God raises up a person, whether through a prophetic word or for someone to pray with you. And in that moment of need, guess what? You find Jesus because you met the most unlikely person on the street or you met the most unlikely person at church or whatever. God sends you somebody and they minister to you and you find Jesus through that relationship with that person. Well, we see right here in verses 7 and 8, Herod called the Magi secretly. And he found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. 
He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. It's unlikely people to help us to find Jesus. You know, we also, in verse 9, we find Jesus through the supernatural acts of God. It says, After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen, when it rose, went ahead of them and stopped over the place where the child was. Verse 9 shows us that that star was the, was the supernatural act of God. God, we find Jesus through the supernatural acts of God. And as we, as we read scripture from Genesis to Revelation, the Bible is full of supernatural acts of God. And God will use the supernatural to help people to find Jesus. I love what it says in Psalm 77 verse 14. It's one of my life verses. I am the God who performs miracles. And I display my power among the peoples, says the Lord. That's a powerful verse. God uses supernatural ways to help people to find Jesus. In our ministry in Mora, Minnesota, you know the testimonies of people being healed week after week. And the over 85 plus cancer healings we have seen. And God uses that. We've seen people come to Christ because we pray with people. They get healed. And when they get healed, their first response is, I want to know that man who touched me. Tell me the name of the person who brought healing to me. His name is Jesus, and let me lead you to him. So when people encounter the supernatural acts of God, people, what? They find Jesus. They find Jesus. The, the Magi, because of the star that led them and guided them, because of the star stood over the place where Jesus was, the supernatural act of God led the Magi to do what? To find Jesus. To find Jesus. You know, we see in uh, verse 8, this is a big point as I was studying, and you can underline this. This is a big one. If we're going to find Jesus, verse 8 says, he sent them to Bethlehem and says, go and search carefully for the child. Go and search carefully. So we find Jesus by going to where he is and search carefully for him. I think of men like Josh McDowell. I think of another great man by the name of Lee Strobel. These were guys that were full-blown atheists. They searched carefully because they, they were trying to debunk the Bible and the validity of the Bible and who Jesus was. But on their journey of trying to debunk the Bible and its meaning, guess what? They found Jesus. They searched carefully. They, they read documents and scriptures, and their conclusion was is. Jesus is real and the word of God is real and because of they searched carefully and diligently they they read through records and historical accounts and records they were trying to they are trying to prove their point that Jesus is not real and the word of God isn't but in their journey of that guess what they found Jesus <laughs> they found Jesus and they found out that he's real and that the Bible is real, that the Bible is true. That So go to where he is. Search carefully. This word to search carefully means to examine closely. This word search carefully means to have diligence. Like it's not just, you're not just reading a brush over the scripture. Or you're not searching this. You know, I'm, just, I'm not just glancing over the headlines. No, I'm like diligent. I'm like searching Diligently, It's also one, in one of the translations I looked at, they said the definition of this word means extreme investigation. Like, this is like over the top investigation. This is like, you're, you're like searching, but you're like going, whoo, you're like going way over the top. That's what it means here to go and search carefully. And you know what? And, and some people in the world, they need to do that. I have friends that they're very intellectual and I just encourage them, you know, search carefully, read things, read, read, read. And, and they come back and they say, wow, the, that it really is true. And because they search diligently. And so God, again, God has many ways to reach the many people that he's created. And I love that about the Lord. He has a way of reaching your friend. He has a way of reaching your coworker. And, and, if, he, and if he doesn't use you, you can encourage him. You can encourage your friends to look at these other ways. But we also, also, as we grow in the Lord, we must maintain a discipline of, of going to where Jesus is. They said, go and search carefully for the child. The Magi did that. They, they left Herod's presence and they went on a mission. They, they searched carefully to where Jesus was. 
we need to go to where he is and we need to search carefully we need to investigate we need to look into scripture we need to you know i always tell people when god is moving in revival or awakening sometimes we have to go to where god is moving and participate in it we need to get our own understanding we need sometimes god may not be moving where you're at you may have to pick up where you're at and go. You may have to go to another town. You may have to go to another meeting. If God is moving somewhere, we need to go where he's moving and we need to search carefully for him. God is so good. He, he does that because he wants, us to, he wants us to get up and go and sometimes we have to get up and go and we need to search carefully for him to find him. Also, it says in verse 8, King Herod says, report to me so that I may go worship him. So we find Jesus through testimony. That word report is testimony. Like, so when we have an encounter, when we understand who Jesus is, when he touches our lives in a very significant way, we, people could find Jesus by you sharing your report or sharing your testimony of what God has done in your life. As you share your testimony with others, people can find Jesus. I love that. Verse 9. We talked about the supernatural acts of God. First, verse 11, you know, it says here, verse 11, on coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary. You know what? You could find Jesus by coming to the house of God. You could find Jesus by coming to the house of God, coming to church. You know, church is a great way to find Jesus. It's, it's, it, it, in some ways, it's, it's one of the easiest places where you could find Jesus is through going to the house of God. Going to the house of God. Jesus says, my house will be what? A house of prayer for the nations. And, and Jesus, where he was at home, he was at the home. And it's just a picture of the house of God that we find Jesus by coming to the house of God. Also, too, it's in verse 11. They bowed down and they worshiped him. You know, we find Jesus through worship. You know, the many ways that we worship, whether it's singing songs, declaring praise, taking communion. You know, you can take communion on your own or together corporately. There's many ways that we can worship, giving into an offering. So through our worship, you know, and as a believer, and as a growing believer in Jesus Christ, for me, this is the most common way I find Jesus in my daily life is through worship. As I'm singing, as I'm, as I'm just putting myself in God's presence, I continually find more of who Jesus is. I find more of his love for me, more of his purpose for my life. You know, as we grow in the Lord, this is an important discipline that, that we find Jesus through our worship. They bow down. They... they they bow down and they worship and, and they found Jesus. Verse 11, we also see here that not just through their worship, they opened the treasures and they presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. We see that through their giving, they found Jesus. You know, we find Jesus through giving. And it's not just giving financially. It's giving of your time, your talents, your treasures. Like giving of yourself. A lot of times it's, it's in serving somebody else that, man, you discover more of who Jesus is because you're hearing what God is saying to you. You're speaking to what God is saying and you take that step of faith to pray with somebody. And, and through praying with somebody, not only do they find Jesus, you find more of him and you realize that he wants to work through you to touch somebody else. That's a great revelation that God works through us to touch others. And through giving and through serving, we discover and find Jesus. And through your acts of giving, people find Jesus. I'm blown away that over the last eight years, just being led by the Lord, whether it's through our church or through my own personal life, when I'm led to give to somebody, when I'm led to meet a need in someone's life, it's amazing how that gift opens up a door to the heart. All because I'm praying and the Lord says, go to your neighbor and do this. Or, or I'm driving somewhere and the Lord says, no, stop and do this to this business or, or do this to here. And, and I'm amazed at the many times that just the obedience of, of giving a gift to somebody opens a door to be a blessing in that person's life. So all these things I just talked about, these are, I just share with you 11 different ways. But I would say the most important way that we find Jesus is in this final point because if we do this 
all the other ones line up. And what is it? Verse 11 gives us the key. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary. They bowed down and worshipped him, and they opened their treasures. Well, we find Jesus comes by opening your heart. The, the way we truly find Jesus, the way your friends, your co-workers, and family members find Jesus is the point where our hearts are open. You don't find Jesus with a closed heart. You find Jesus when your heart is open. This word open is a very, a very interesting word here. You know, it, it means to break. It means to break open. What does Psalms 51 encourage us? David says, out of a broken and contrite heart. It's in those areas of brokenness that people become more open to the gospel. The areas of trial. See, in this season of, of 2020, there's been invitations into brokenness that has opened up doors to people's hearts to find Jesus in this season. Through our brokenness, through your brokenness, we discover more of who God is. Whether you're a believer going through a loss, this year I lost my father. This was the first Christmas without my dad. That brokenness is helping me to find more of who Jesus is. And you are probably have discovered in this season through your own personal brokenness, a job loss, a health loss, a health battle, whatever it is, there's many ways. But God uses brokenness in a way to open up our heart. God will use brokenness in your friend's life. The broken areas of their life, God will use to open their heart to receive and find Jesus. I found Jesus when I was an alcoholic and a suicidal person. I found Jesus in my brokenness. I found him there. And, and many people find Jesus in their lowest place of brokenness. The wise men, when they opened their treasures, they found Jesus. See, the only way we find Jesus is by opening up our heart. And we see the fruits of an open heart. Verse 10, it says here that when they saw the star, they were overjoyed. When your heart is open, you, you receive joy. A fruit of an open heart is worship, verse 11. A fruit of an open heart is giving. And when, you're, when you're closed off, you don't give, want to give anything. But when your heart is open, you're willing to give. You're willing to serve. You're willing to, to help. A fruit of an open heart is sensitivity to the leading of the Lord. It says here in verse 12 that after having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they return to the country by another route. So an open heart allows us to stay sensitive to the leading of the Lord. I tell you what, as we're going into 2021 church, if I could just implore you, if you're a believer in Jesus Christ, we, I feel like the Lord is saying to us, we must keep an open heart into the next season. Why? Because we need to maintain our sensitivity to the leading of the Lord. The only way you know the Lord's leading in your life, the only way you know his sensitivity, if you're not getting any dreams and visions, chances are your heart may shut off or closed off. But if your heart is open, you receive visions from the Lord. You receive the word of the Lord. You receive the leading and the sensitivity of the Spirit. And as we go into this next season, we must maintain that open heart before the Lord because we need to make, be continually sensitive to the leading of the Lord in our life. See, the fruit of an open heart is giving. You know, they gave their treasures. And we, all, we know that in Matthew 6, 21, it says this, Matthew 6, 21, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be. We could know where the Magi's heart was. The Magi's heart was, was for the Lord. Where your treasure is, that's where your heart is. Where was their treasure? Well, they didn't hold on to their treasure. They gave the gold and the frankincense and the myrrh away. The Magi's heart was totally focused on, on Jesus. And there, as we maintain an open heart, we realize that where our treasure is, that's where our heart will be in. And as we maintain an open heart, our heart will be for the Lord. You know, opening up our heart in this manner allows God to bring blessing to us. I just find it interesting that when the Magi opened their treasures, when they opened up their heart, God blessed the Magi with another route and another way. 
to be protected from King Herod. Do you realize that? that? That as the Magi was obedient to what God called them to do in that moment, and as they opened up and as they maintained an open heart, God gave them a vision that says, you know what, don't, remember, it's like the Lord says, remember, and Herod says, go back and report to him where the baby is. It was like after they gave, the Lord says, no, 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 no. I don't want you to go back to King Herod. I don't want you to report back to him. No, how about you guys need to go this way because I want to protect you. I want to lead you out of Bethlehem through another route and through another way. And I find it interesting that God did that. But first, the, the Magi had an open heart and they gave. As they gave in their obedience, it was like God blessed them. It's like, it's like you know, a lot of times in the kingdom, we, we give and then the blessing comes down. Like we draw close to God, he draws close to us. So our acts of giving, our acts of remaining open before the Lord, our acts of obedience and worship opens the door for God to release something from heaven to earth to us. And in this moment, the blessing came as a dream and a vision and as an escape plan so that the Magi could leave Bethlehem secretly without being found out by King Herod. That's amazing. And why? Why did God have the Magi do that? Is because God had a plan for his son. God also needed to move Mary and Joseph away. They had to go down to Egypt for a season because of King Herod. So if the Magi went back to the, the palace, that would not have given Mary and Joseph enough time to leave. So by, by the Magi leaving, it gave more time for Mary and Joseph to make the preparations that they needed to go to Egypt. Hmm. You know, our hearts open. So how do we get an open heart? Well, in this passage here, our hearts open when we come into the house. Our hearts open when we come through the gate. Our hearts open when we come through the door. And who's the gate? Who's the door? Other than Jesus. Jesus says, I am the way. He is the gate. He is the door. And we get an open heart by coming into the house, coming through the gate, coming through the threshold of a door and we all have an open heart what when we see jesus our hearts open i tell you what no matter what condition you're in when you cross the threshold of that house and you see the messiah face to face your only response in that moment is to do two things you bow down and you worship that's all you got i mean no matter what was on the magi's mind at that moment when they stepped through the threshold of that door and glanced at baby Jesus, they bowed and they worshiped. That's how you get an open heart. Is when you step across that threshold, when you step into the presence of God and you see who Jesus really is, you have no choice but to bow. You have no choice but to kneel in the presence of God. You have no choice but to offer worship because that's what happens. That's how our hearts get open. We, we, and a lot of us today, I mean, you step into the presence of the Lord. It's like, man, this is so good. Because you step into his presence and you see who Jesus is. And as we grow, we must continue to maintain an open heart that, that isn't just full of knowledge, but remains sensitive to the Lord. We have to be careful that we just don't grow in the knowledge of the Lord, but we also grow in our sensitivity to his leading and to his guidance, that we grow in a, not just a deeper knowledge of the word of God, but we also at the same time grow into a greater sensitivity of the leading of the spirit in our life. That's how we find Jesus in dark times, is that we grow in our knowledge of the Lord, but we also grow in our sensitivity to the Lord so that we could find Jesus through these difficult and trying times. Now, as we wrap up this message today, some of you are already open. You're open to the Lord. You know, you're, and I want to encourage you, keep an open heart. Keep walking in the sensitivity of the Lord today. You know, this message may just be a simple encouragement that you're already doing this. You're already maintaining an open heart. You know that your heart is clean and, and you're growing in your sensitivity to the Lord. But if you're finding that you're having trouble today, let me share three types of people. Because in Matthew 2, 1 through 12, there's three types of people that 
they didn't find Jesus. And, and I can explain why they didn't find Jesus. The first person who didn't find Jesus was King, other than King Herod. You know, when, when, when everything took place, the, the Bible says of King Herod, when he heard of the news, he was disturbed. King Herod is a picture of someone who's so focused on self. King Herod was focused on himself. He, when he heard that the Magi came, like, where is the king of the Jews? Could you imagine? First of all, King Herod was known as the king of the Jews, church. And, and there's a backstory in how King Herod even got the throne. I mean, he was set up as a, you know, he, he made a deal with the Roman Empire to get set up as the king of Jerusalem. He, he made a backdoor deal and they called him, the Romans called him the king of the Jews. So how do you think Herod felt when the Magi says, hey, where's the king of the Jews? And Herod must be thinking, I am the king of the Jews. The Magi, uh uh, uh, uh. And that's when Herod said, hey, I need these religious leaders and chief priests to come in and hey where's the king of the Jews and, and their religious leaders said hey this is right here it's just in Bethlehem so King Herod at that point and here's another thing here's another reason why King Herod was disturbed that we tend to forget first of all the magi weren't just three dudes there were three gifts but it doesn't mean there are three guys the magi were trained under Daniel in Babylon they were kind of like, for example, the Levites were like the priests. The Magi were kind of a, a grouping of, of guys like that. Some were believers, some weren't, but Daniel was the one who raised these guys up. The Magi could have been a group of a hundred guys, also an army of a thousand soldiers led them in to Jerusalem. So it was about a hundred Magi with an army that led them in. And why is Herod disturbed? What was going on during this time was none other than a census. Herod's army was deployed at the census. When the hundred magi showed up with a thousand soldiers on Herod's doorstep and Herod has no army to defend himself, you think you'd be a little disturbed? Because if you know Israel's past, the group of the group where the magi came from out of Babylon it was years ago that that same grouping of soldiers conquered Jerusalem and cut the ears off of Jerusalem's king. Herod is probably thinking, dude, I know history. I'm here alone. My soldiers, I can't get on the phone and call them to help me. I got a hundred magi. I want to know where the king of the Jews is, and they're accompanied by a thousand soldiers. Herod, instead of focusing his eyes on the right thing, he focused on himself because now he's about self-preservation. What can I do to save myself? He's not concerned about Israel. He's not concerned about Jerusalem. He's not concerned about the people, he, his subjects. He's only concerned about saving himself. And when we get to a of, of, of self-preservation and self-focus well we get disturbed in our inner life and we can get so disturbed on the inside of our soul that we can miss Jesus we can get so caught up in what's the drama of life that that we can get so we can miss Jesus and, and King Herod missed Jesus he, he, he didn't even follow through with what he told the Magi he says, report back to me that what? I may go worship. King Herod didn't go worship Jesus. We know what he did later. He had a plot and a plan to kill Jesus, but he did not have a heart to go to Bethlehem to bow down and worship Jesus. He never went. And if we get so focused on ourselves, if we get so disturbed and so anxious in our inner life, it's a, it's a warning sign that we could miss Jesus. And we have to be careful that we don't miss Jesus that way. Another way that we can miss Jesus is through the act of the religious leaders. You know, I find this is very disturbing to me. It might not disturb you, but as I read this account, when, when Herod called in the religious leaders, 
These guys knew exactly where Jesus was, and they knew exactly, they, they knew that what the prophet said. They, I mean, they confirmed everything the Magi talked about. And so the religious leaders, they're an example of, you could, they just grew apathetic. They, they had a spirit of indifference. They, it was almost like they had a knowledge of the word of God, but they had no passion for God and no love for people connected to it. They, they had a heart for scripture. They knew scripture, but there was no passion for God and there was no passion for the people. And whew, may we not get like that. May we not get to a place where we know so much about scripture that we no longer love God and we no longer love God's people. That's a danger place to, to be in. And the religious leaders are an example of apathy because they also didn't go see him. Which is shocking to me because isn't this the fulfillment of prophecy that this is the Messiah? That not just the Messiah, but the long-awaited Messiah, the Savior, the deliverer of God's people, that the, old, that the people that should get it, the people that should understand it the most, missed it. And the religious leaders continue to miss it as Jesus grew up. And they continue to miss it, miss it as Jesus did miracles in their day. It was the religious people that debated him, that criticized him. It was the religious people that put him on that cross too. The people that Jesus came to reach the most were the ones that rejected him the most. And the danger for these group of people was is they had too much knowledge. But they had no sensitivity to the leading of the Lord. And that's, a, that's something that we have to be careful of as we go into this next season, is that we don't get so full of knowledge that we lose our sensitivity to the moving of the Spirit. The religious leaders, they had everything they needed from a knowledge standpoint, but when Jesus was moving in their midst, they could not grasp it, they could not understand it. When Jesus was healing the sick, when he was casting out demons, they didn't embrace it, they debated him, they criticized him, they rejected him. They even tried to kill him a couple times. Why? It's because they had so much knowledge, but no sensitivity to the leading of the Holy Ghost in their life. And the people that Jesus came to reach the most were the ones that missed it. The long-awaited Messiah is finally here, and they're like, eh, we know where he is. We know he fulfilled prophecy, but the chief priests and the religious leaders did not make a four-mile journey down the road to see Jesus. The religious people missed it. Finally, we see the people, of, the people of that day missed it because we see in Luke's gospel that because of the census, because they did an annual census that, you know, the first year they did the census when Jesus was born. And then, I mean, every year Mary and Joseph had to go down to, to make an account. And during the time of the census, it's always a busy time. And and so the census also the threat of the romans i mean there was a lot of things that people were consumed of and also we know that in luke's gospel these people were too busy there was a lot of busyness and they had no room for jesus so we're gonna miss jesus if you're too busy and you don't want to make room for him i mean it's pretty obvious if you're not making room for jesus in your life and you're just too busy with your life well guess what you're gonna miss jesus you're going to miss Jesus. See, these three people had a closed heart. If your heart is closed and you have no room, you won't find Jesus. If your heart's disturbed or too focused on yourself, you can't find Jesus. If your heart is indifferent or apathetic, you'll never find Jesus. These individuals missed the coming of Jesus, and it's these same types of people that will miss the second coming of Jesus church it's kind of a warning to us that if these people miss the first coming these are the three types of people that will miss his second coming that's why it's important that we keep an open heart we have to learn how to keep that open heart there's times as a believer we may feel like something's missing in our life and some of you watching today some of you here you may feel like for the first time maybe you feel like like that video you've been trying 
to replace Jesus with other things. And, and you feel like there's something missing inside. And whether you're a believer or not, some of you may feel like today, man, I, have, I feel like there's something missing on the inside. And well, maybe it's a sign, maybe that feeling is coming to you because you're trying to replace Jesus with somebody or something else. See, nothing can replace Jesus. Ecclesiastes says God sets eternity into our hearts. That there's a spot in our heart that only Jesus can fill. But guess the good news to today is it's still not too late to find Jesus. <laughs> It's not too late to find Jesus. You still have time in 2020 to find Jesus. You, you still, there's still time for you to open up your heart today. It's never too late to find Jesus. You know, it's pretty simple. We find Jesus through faith. We find Jesus through our belief in him. We find Jesus through encountering his presence. But, there, but when we find Jesus, verse 10 says will be overflowed with joy that truly when we find jesus he's the one who brings joy to our heart he brings joy to our life when we find jesus he's the one who gives us hope in dark times and dark places and dark seasons as we close this service today and as we close out a year and as we look ahead to the new year it all comes down to this prophetic act that i think we all should do today First, I want to speak to those that are believers and you've been following the Lord. I want to encourage you today. Please heed the warning of today's word that God showed us about not being so knowledgeable that we lose our sensitivity. God wants us to maintain that sensitive heart. It's key that, that, we, that, we, that we know God, but yet at the same time, we got to be led by his spirit. That's how we move with him. That's how the Magi were quickly to adapt. That's how Mary and Joseph were, were quickly to leave. But, you know, when they, I mean, they, they knew about the Lord and they knew, I mean, Mary and Joseph knew what God said to them and what God spoke to them. But when the angel came to Joseph and says, get up and go to Egypt, they, there is no debate, no question. They got up and they went. When the Magi opened their heart and they had a sensitivity to the Lord, when the, when the angel spoke to them, they, they, they went and they followed. Why? Because they knew the Lord, but they were sensitive to the leading and the prompting of the moving of the Spirit in their life. And I believe for those of us that are believers today, that's the word of the Lord as we end this year, is that we must maintain our knowledge of God, but we need to regain our sensitivity to the leading of the Holy Spirit. That's how we move in dark times. That's how we move through difficult seasons is, is knowing the Lord, but yet being led by the Spirit. Because God leads us. God guides us. God speaks to us. And if we're sensitive, we could be open to all those ways that we talked about today, how God wants to, how he could help you find him in this season. And those of you today that are watching for the first time, maybe like, man, I've never, and I've... <laughs> I've never opened up my heart to let Jesus in. Well, you're in a good place today because today you can open your heart up to let him in. He wants to reach you. He wants to touch you where you're at today. He, you know what? Maybe, maybe if there was a season of your life where you did open your heart up to the Lord, but for whatever season, maybe you closed your heart up. But good news is you can always open the door to your heart again. And I want to encourage you today for the first time, or maybe, maybe you went through a season where you've just shut the door. Whatever reason, you just shut that door of your heart off and and now you're at a place today where the Lord's reminded, look, can, it says in Revelation 3.20, I stand at the door and knock. See, that's what I love about Jesus. That's what I love about the, the birth of Jesus and his story there is because on that, on that night before Jesus was born, God was knocking on those doors. But there was one person, that innkeeper says, you know what? I, you know what, Jesus, I got room. It's not a fancy room. In fact, it's a messy place. Guess what? God wants to go into your mess today. When you open the door and Jesus comes in, he, he wants to make all things new. He wants to clean out the closets. He wants to clean out the messy areas of your heart and life. That's what he does. And that's what he does best. And when, he come, when you open the door and he comes in, guess what? He doesn't judge you. He doesn't criticize you. He's not going to make fun of your house, of your heart. He's going to say, mm, I can work with that. And, and he begins a transformation. He begins a restoration. He brings, a, he brings in a demolition crew, and he tears it all down, and he builds it all brand new.
And he does it with a smile and he does it with sensitivity. He does it with gentleness. You're never going to feel guilty. You're never going to feel bad. You're never going to feel condemnation when he does it. But when he's knocking, when you open them up like the innkeeper did, he makes things new. And I think that's what we need to do today. As we close out this old year and as we embrace a new one, Psalms 51 is a great psalm to reflect on. We talked about that. Create me a clean heart, O oh God. Renew a right spirit within me. Some of us, we just need God to create in us a clean heart today. Some of us need to pray Ezekiel's prayer. You know, Ezekiel prays this prayer. Lord, take out the old heart. Take out that hardened heart and take that one out and re put a new heart in its place. That's a prophetic act of the old. God taking out the old and putting in the new. And, and guess what? None of us want a hardened and cold heart. But when God puts in a new heart into our life, he gives us that sensitive heart. He gives us a heart that knows the voice of God. He gives us a heart that's sensitive to his leading of the spirit today. Hmm. So, Father, as we close out today's service, you've reminded us through your word. And I, I believe, Lord, this is a now word for us as we close out this year is that, Lord, Lord, if we forgive us today, if we've not been open to your leading in this season. Lord, forgive us if we've closed off our heart towards you today. Lord, just forgive us. Lord, I know there's been times this last year where I just wasn't that sensitive enough to your leading. And Lord, forgive me for that. Lord, I know that all of us are going through tough times. And I just pray today that you forgive us for those moments where we just were not as sensitive to your leading. Lord, forgive us that, forgive us for just having too much knowledge of you, but not being sensitive to that prompting or leading. Lord, help us to have a, a balance of, of knowing about you, but also give us that balance with the leading of your spirit too, so that we know you're what your word says, but at the same time, we, we are sensitive enough to, to be in step with your spirit, to be walking by your spirit and being led by your spirit in our daily life. Lord, today we just are hearing you knocking, and today we prophetically open up the door. And, and if you're watching a liner in person, just say, Jesus, is coming. just ask Jesus to come into your heart today. Say, Jesus, come in. And and, 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 and you know what? If, you, if you've made some mistakes or, you know what, just ask Jesus to come in there. He, he's not, he's not going to be surprised by your mess. He just wants to come in there and he wants to make things new again for you today. So ask Jesus, as especially, it's a great discipline and practice to, to close out a year by saying, God, take out the old and and make me ready for the new and so right now as we are this is the last week of this year just begin to say lord come into my heart and take out those things that this lord take these things out because lord i don't want to go into my next year with these things so begin to ask the lord lord take these things away and maybe their attitudes he wants to take away addictions he wants to take away habits he wants to take away or maybe there's just some you know sickness or disease i mean whatever it is what, whatever has, hinder, has been hindering you in this season, ask the Lord to remove it so that you go into 2021 changed and that you go into 2021 with, with a new perspective and a new focus. Lord, begin to do house cleaning in our hearts. Lord, take out the old heart and stick in a, a sensitive heart that knows you today. Lord, we pray David's prayer. Lord, create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Lord, create in me a clean heart, a pure heart, a sensitive heart, a heart that hears, a heart that listens. Lord, give me a heart that obeys. Give me a heart that's teachable, Lord. Lord, te Lord, give me a teachable heart. Give me a heart that's teachable. Give me a heart that's obedient. Give me a heart that's thoughtful. Give me a heart that's kind today. Give me a heart that's gentle, Lord. Give me a heart that's pure, Lord. Father, give me a heart that, that surrenders. Give me a heart that sacrifices. Give me a heart that reaches out. Give me a heart that loves the broken and the hurting. Give me a heart that loves those that are close to me that drive me nuts. Give me a heart, Lord, that loves those that are difficult. Lord, give me a new heart. 
God, give me a heart that just sees a different focus and a different perspective. Just give me a new heart, Lord. Give me a heart that's free of offense. Give me a heart that's free of bitterness. Father, give me a heart that has no anger within it. Give me a heart, Lord, that is new and clean. Father, give me a heart that's free of sickness and disease. Just give me a new heart. Give me a clean heart. Lord, today, that's my offering. Lord, that's my offering, is this. Lord, I know it's not much, but Lord, I give you this old heart of mine. I give it to you as an offering. And Lord, now I'm, Lord, prophetically, I'm taking this new heart you want to offer me. But Lord, first, I need to give you this one. So Lord, I gladly give you this heart. Now, Lord, give me this new one. And Lord, set it in place. Lord, your word says that you could set things in place to make me whole and complete. Lord, take this new heart and set it in place to make me whole, to make me complete today so that I may walk boldly and confidently into a new season, into a new year, God. Lord, just help me to maintain a heart that is open to you. Lord, forgive me for closing my heart up today. Lord, give me a, a posture of an open heart, a heart that could freely give and also a heart that could freely receive from you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for what you're doing in us today. Thank you, God, for what you're going to do through us because of what you're doing in us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Holy Spirit, just come minister. Minister, minister to your church. Minister to your bride today. Minister to your men and women and children today. Minister to your teenagers today. Lord, just begin to minister. God, begin to minister to those broken areas. Begin to minister, God. Begin to massage those things out today. And begin to, to create a new thing and a fresh start in our life and in our heart, Lord. And begin to help us to regain our sensitivity back to the leading of your spirit, the prompting of your spirit. Lord, may we just, Lord, begin to just massage those things back into place. God, let the oxygen of the Holy Spirit, let the Ruach of your Spirit come through our lives and just breathe fresh life into us today. Igniting something new. Igniting something that renews our mind and renews our focus and heart today. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Just want to encourage you that as you're as you're taking time this week, just think about those things and go back. I encourage you read this passage again and re-listen to the message and and just see what the Lord is saying to you today. Go back to Psalms 51 and just that's a great. I always when I'm fasting and praying, I always like to go to Psalms 51 because I just want God to create me a clean heart. I I don't want any of the old to be there. I want the new to come and. And so David, you know, he prayed that prayer in a time of his worst, of his brokenness. I mean, he was so broken when he came to the Lord that way. But yet we also see how God restored David because of his obedience in brokenness. And so take this message today, reflect on it. And just that simple act of giving God the old and accepting the new and just begin to cry out to the Lord, Lord, give me a heart that's open and Give me a heart that's sensitive to your leading. But a par that's a powerful prayer that we could pray, but also it's a great prayer that God will answer. And guess what? He'll answer it quickly too. He, he won't delay in that. He, I believe he'll come and he will come readily and quickly to meet that need in your life, to give you that brand new heart, that brand new start. Ah, man, so good. So good being with you all today. And, and as we close out today's service, just want to remind you again, if you've jumped online a, a little bit later in, there's four different ways you can give today. And, you know, and as you're giving, you can also just pray about an end of the year gift or maybe a first fruits offering. A lot of times when you, your know, first fruits offering is like, hey, you know, I'm just going to start a new year. I'm going to give that way. So whether it's giving, I always believe in starting strong and finishing strong and I just want to encourage you. I want you to know today, thank you for your prayers and encouragement because you know what? I'm fired up. I just want you to know that I'm fired up. 2021, watch out. 
I am fired up. I am, I'm not going into 2021 limping. I'm not going in there. To, ooh, I'm, I'm just, boom, give me some gasoline. Let's go. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm fired up, but I know why. It's because your prayers. It's your encouragement. You know, your support. Your, I mean, that does so much. And I'm just so, I am so fired up, ready to go. And I, I, I hope that you guys are too. <laughs> So let's go, guys. Let's go. Let's do this. You know, we could do these things. There's a lot that God wants to do in our lives this year. And there's, there's still a lot he wants to finish. He wants us all to finish strong, you know. I believe that, man, just like Israel, they, they went in one way, but they went out blessed. They went, I mean, they went, we realize that they went out of Egypt blessed. They, I mean, they went in oppressed, discouraged, and, and tied up and chained up, but they left Egypt free they left egypt with plunder i mean dude they they went into the wilderness with loaded down with everything they needed and on top of that god says here's some man and here's some meat to go with that i mean that's awesome i mean god wants to do that to you guys too he wants you to leave he wants you to go into the new season strong and ready to go and anticipating the supernatural work that he wants to do in your life in this next season and i am so um I'm just fired up, so I just, <laughs> anyway, thank you for your giving in this season, and stay tuned to our Facebook page, website, app for other, other updates of things that are coming up, but from our family to yours, we want to, you know, wish you a Merry Christmas, and we also want to wish you a Happy New Year, because the next time we're together, it's, hey, I get, I get to see you next year, so in a few days, we're going into a new year. We're going to close out 2020. We're going to enter into 2021. And I can't wait to see you guys next year. Blessings to you today. Thank you, Eric. God bless.